It's actually pretty sexy. <laughs> but I'm biased. I'm very, very excited. Yeah, super excited. Very exciting. Brilliant. Interesting. Even if the camera got off, I'd be like super pumped about this stuff. Good morning, everybody. It is Monday the 15th of March. That means a couple of things. Number one, it's two days before St. Patrick's Day, which means we're all going to go out and drink green beer on Wednesday. Number two, apparently the Vietnamese borders are open for tourism today. So if you want to come and visit Vietnam, in theory it's possible. Number three, and this is the important reason that I'm talking, is that behind me there is a lot going on in the factory. So things occurring this week that I want to talk to you about. Number one, our furniture. All our furniture has been completed. Sorry, Thomas the tank engine just went past. <laughs> All our furniture has been completed. Now that has now been moved from factory 2B to factory 2A. So from different parts of the factory. That is going to be trimmed up over the next week. It's going to be dry fitted and then it's going to be fitted once they've worked out that everything actually slots into place. They also need to do some work with some other bits around the furniture. So let's go inside the factory, follow us in and we're going to go and see what is going on with Ruby Rose 2. So back inside the factory, Ruby Rose 2 now. Follow me, follow me, follow me. And I'm geeking out on these, but look at this. I know it's all done by like architectural drawing, but the fact that they've got this sat on a beautiful little cradle, for and aft, really, really nice. Because I haven't finished the fairing on the keels. So before she was sat on her keels, but now probably about four or five inches off the ground. So that's all now ready for the next stage. Because the factory is still kind of being put together, they're kind of trying to juggle two balls, getting this factory fitted out and also at the same time building the boats. There's going to be a station over there which is going to be dedicated to getting all the work done on the furniture and the trimming but now there's a field station. So let's go over there and have a look at that. Okay, so just follow me across here. Again, this is the station, and this will be the part of the factory where all the fiberglass work is done before like the final fit out. So the last time you saw us here, all our furniture was being infused. Let's go and see them. They are looking very, very, very different. It is far, far easier to see what we're talking about when everything is demolded and the right way up so we're not looking at a negative image. This is the starboard fore cabin. So two steps leading up to the bunk. So this is going to be the bunk, but this is only part of the bunk. I know you've got this area here, but this will have cabinetry on. So the cabinetry face comes up there. That will form the bunk fore and aft. And where I'm stood here is actually going to be the floor of the, the, the walkway forward in the starboard hull. Coming forward here, this, the greatest invention since someone decided to put a dedicated workshop into a boat, my workshop. Important to know that behind this, crash bulkhead. So this forms part of the second crash bulkhead. If you haven't already seen that, refer back to our episode on crash bulkheads. Come forward here, you can kind of see why this is so thick now because it actually forms part of the bulkhead and this will bond in somewhere so this will form part of the second bulkhead so again really quite thick i'd say that's probably about an inch of foam core multiple layers of glass on that starboard side cabin over here starboard side aft cabin so things to, to see that we can locate now firstly escape hatch so companionway steps will come down here. Moving forward, or aft in this case, this is going to be the whole aft cabin. So again, moving, moving backwards. So the bed is gonna go there. And then as I move around even further, this is gonna be the access to the engine on starboard. And yeah, I know it's noisy, but yeah, it's a working factory. It's easy at this position to see the bed, I think, comes up to here, right? It does, it goes across there, and that, that recess it is, um, Storage. Yes, so basically we are having drawers put in there, so it shows the amount of storage space we're going to have in drawers. It's actually pretty sexy, but I'm biased. So here we have the port side stern aspect of the interior. This is where our workstation is going to be, so it's not a vanity unit, it's a desk, wardrobe here, heads all the way back here. Companion way there, you can see where the stairs are going to be because it's all inserted there. It's the first time actually you can see this. You can see the, the way that the non steps going to be for the, for the heads. Yeah. So that, that textured surface and then 
engine access there, again above the submerged water line should that compartment flood. Sump for the shower and then just essentially the, gr the grid that will go over to just keep everything dry in the heads. This is the master cabin. This is where the bed is going to be. This is where our bed is going to be. This is all going to be built out with wooden cabinetry and this actually forms the base of where our bed will be. So it's pretty huge. Moving forward, there's a bulkhead that goes into here. Then you've got this, which will form the walk-in wardrobe. So this is the wardrobe, but then forward of this, there's a sail locker. So basically these all need to be trimmed up. If you look at this, they've obviously been demolded and this part all needs to be trimmed because here, this is unsupported. So these need to be bonded in. So over the next week, this will all get trimmed back, polished and fared. Then these will be lifted into Ruby Rose 2. They'll dry fit it to make sure that there's no issues with it. Make sure nothing needs to be adjusted. Then they'll bond it in. So this actually is really the evolution of our boat. We're going from a boat which has nothing in it, that really cool carbon fibre frame inside, to actually having the furniture inserts in. And then at that point, you know, they've got to the point where once the engines have gone in, it then we then move on to fit out. Yeah, super excited. Even if the camera were off, I'd be like super pumped about this stuff. Brilliant. Welcome back to the Cat Life Factory. Today's gonna be an extension of what we saw the last time we were here, which was two days ago. A couple of things. The furniture inserts have all been made. When we last saw them, they needed to be trimmed because they were just out of the mold. Now it's got to be dry fitted to Ruby Rose 2. Make sure that everything actually fits into place perfectly. The next stage after that is to actually bond them into the, into the hull. After that, we look to the deck going on. The deck delay is caused by them having to, as we discussed before, use the first deck to make templates to make the headliners. So that's where the kind of like, the, the, there's a, a slight bottleneck. But after that deck, and then of course, as we discussed on one of our videos, um, I think it was the last couple of weeks ago, we have the coach roof, which will be the last part that goes on. Now, something that we didn't mention to you is that that entire huge structure is all gonna be in carbon fiber. And it's when you see the size of that coach roof, it makes you realize why doing that in carbon fiber to us made so much sense. We are gonna get on with seeing the inserts for our furniture go into our boat. So you may recognize this from earlier in the episode. This is the insert for the aft part of the master hull. So behind me is the kind of shower room. And then as we pointed out earlier, we've got where the vanity unit and the workstation is gonna be, as well as the storage space. So you can see that they've actually made cuttings for the engine access that's behind me. I'll just change the focus so you can see it. We've also got where the water will drain from. That's gonna be, I guess, going down to the bilges or the sump. And then I'm not actually sure this is another cutout. So you can see just here. And I'm not actually sure what is going to be behind there. I think probably, do you know what? Shane, I think, mentioned it to us a few episodes ago, and I will just cut back to him. Uh, here is where we have some of our watermaker equipment installed, or if you've got other options, you've got other equipment in there. I think it's um, plant machinery, plant equipment, so I'm not quite sure. And then you can see that there's also a cutout in um, the, the floor as well. So they've obviously made quite a lot of progress. They've also, as you can see, just kind of cleaned up the edges here. The inserts are all ready to go into the boat. We're very, very excited to see that happen because as Nick said, it's gonna be kind of really a huge step forward for us. All right, so it looks like they're starting off with our uh, cabin insert. So that's our bed, um, as well as like the shelving. It's gonna be a bit of a struggle to film this one because obviously they're putting it into the forward part of the boat, which we can't access <laughs> and stay out of their way. So we'll do what we can, but I'm excited. Our entire bed's going into the boat right now. There's some guy on our bed. <laughs> Obviously the inserts, um, they're forklifting them in until they get the main hoist up and running and I'll just try them in for size. So Nick, tell us what's happening. <laughs> so basically they've just managed to get the insert, our bedroom insert, into the boat. So that's now slotted in. There was a little snagging point on one of the, one of the, the kind of like the reinforcing stringers on the inboard side of the port harlot just needed a minor adjustment. It's, we're talking about a millimetre just to be shaved off. 
And now that insert is going in, so they're going to try it in and out. So I hope you can hear me over the angle grinder. We'll go time lapse of this, and hopefully we'll show you exactly what they're doing. They lower the insert, the, the entire cabin insert in slowly. As they drop it down on the forklift, they find any snag points and adjust them. So over the course of the last half hour, we've dropped about three foot. They're now finding, as they go down, where they get smaller interferences. You'll hear an angle grinder going in a bit. Ta-da! <laughs> that will then remove that interference and it all slots in. We're talking about taking maybe a millimeter, two millimeters off just as it goes in, just to get it a really snug fit. Don't forget that these inserts were all trimmed up. So if the trimming was just slightly too large, just is around the edges, then it will need another fine adjustment. From what I can see, looking at the guy there that's just, with, just, that's just kind of removing that, again, it, this is the outboard stringer in the bow section of the port side hull. There's obviously like a snagging point that needs to be adjusted. He's doing that, and as soon as he gets that done, they'll bring it up again and then use a small amount of like gravity, the momentum, just to kind of see if that sinks in. So they won't force anything in. One reason is because you don't want to damage anything, but also the insert is a much thinner, more pliable shape. But a couple of things. Number one, you get distortion. You can't have distortion in the shape, but also you can then get it jammed and you don't want to do that. Either in place or it's very, very close to being in place. Now, no tension on the straps, which means that it's not being supported. The staff are just kind of like, massaging it into place. So this is just a try in and they'll do this with all the pieces today. They'll do this one, then they'll do the next insert and they'll put, make sure all these inserts fit perfectly before they're bonded in. So now what are they gonna do? Well, if you look at James, he's wandering around with them. Essentially, it's a, it's a Sharpie. So yeah. basically what he's doing, because it's white gel coat, he's using the blue marker to show where uh, like fine trimming probably needs to occur. So at the aft edge, it will be where I sleep. The, the nearest strap yeah. to starboard, yeah. there's a, some blue lines he's yeah. kind of drawn on there. Yeah. And that will need to be trimmed again. So I think that basically he wants to do some fine adjustments there. They've seen where the trimming needed to occur. And because they can't trim in that place, They'll pull it all up, trim it, and then lower it. And now it's, that's where they're going now. So looking at what they're taking off, I think there's literally slithers of millimeters coming off. So they're now working at that level. You can just see there's a slight edge, just yeah. a little bit. So they're literally just taking a millimeter, a millimeter, and a millimeter. It is pretty interesting that, you know, you've got a piece of essentially fiberglass composite that must be in its entirety three meters by three meters by about two and a half meters. And they're now working with like a couple of millimeters to get that trimming done. And you can kind of see the guy with the angle grinder there, just that the last bit is taken off. And literally where Jay just put that blue pen mark, yeah. there's literally just a pinch point there. And you can see like how little he's taken off. So look, he's just cutting through that now. Well, there's another few grams light on our boat. <laughs> <laughs> Interesting. They are literally working for tolerances that are a few millimeters. They can't be anything rubbing, or either it causes problems or it causes squeaks. But we've seen other boats where there's been gaps that in some yeah. cases are a couple of inches, right? No? They're literally working to millimeters here, but we've seen, you know, a kit cat's work on other boats. So hopefully, no, not hopefully, this will not be mastic filled. We intend to see a, a very small bead of mastic. That's what we like to see, isn't it? Not, not the old mastic pump kind of like being squirted by some like massive fat guy with a set of like Britney bagpipes and a big hose. Yeah, Nick is full of admiration for the guys who work in this factory all day. It is hot. They obviously acclimatised to it, but we haven't quite done that yet. So we're like sweating and they're just, doesn't seem to bother them at all. So they actually are going to uh, put one more insert in today. This is the furniture insert for the guest cabin. So the starboard forward cabin. They're meant to finish in half an hour, so I don't know how much they'll get done, but obviously they think they can do it. So yeah, we'll stick around and watch them do what they do. I don't know about you guys, but my heart rate is up. Mind you, James, who is uh, the supervisor, he looks as cool as a cucumber, so I think it's just me. The forward, the starboard cabin furniture insert is pretty much in, I think. 
looks like it to my untrained eye. So these guys are just about to uh, wrap up and, and head home. So I think that's our cue to go as well. Hope you guys enjoy this episode. If you are really desperate to see the next stage, because I know that I am, I really want to see all the furniture inserts in the boat like right now, then subscribe to the channel and click the notification bell because that's exactly what we'll be doing in the next episode, taking a look at the next stage of the boat build and all the furniture inserts will be in. And so we'll get a real sense of the inside of the boat, the spaces inside the boat, how big everything is, where everything's going to be, very exciting. So I hope you guys are enjoying the boat building episodes. I know that they're pretty technical and they're not for everyone. We've been getting some amazing feedback from you guys saying this is so interesting, but we've also had comments saying, you know what, you know, I can't wait for the sailing to start. And I'll tell you what, me neither. I cannot wait to be out on the water again on this boat. It's gonna be amazing. It's not far away now, guys. So hang in there and we'll see you next week.